So, uh, the matter concerning sexual purity is a destiny issue. Many people ask why, why, why pursue this whole idea of sexual purity? Well, for starters, it's a command from God. Uh, God desires us to be sexually pure. Um, secondly, to honor marriage, because um, if there's something that sexual sin does, lust does, that lust kills the drive for marriage. And lust takes the joy out of marriage, whether you're married or not. As you're married, it kills the joy within your marriage. When you're not married, it kills the hope for future marriage. But many times we don't talk about destiny. We don't talk about the effect that sexual sin has on your destiny. What's your destiny? Your destiny is what God has called you to be, uh, what God has called you to do. And many believers don't consider the impact of their sexuality on their destiny. And I think the Bible is very clear on this matter that um, if you if you hate your destiny, live a sexually impure life. Just 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 live a sexually impure life. Just watch porn, masturbate, you know, uh fornicate. Just just live a sexually impure life. Well, of course, we understand that uh, a truly born again believer does not enjoy sin. They may struggle with sin, but they don't indulge in sin because the Holy Spirit lives inside of them. And if the Holy Spirit lives inside of them, they're convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment. They are transformed. They're a new person. So uh, just before we even talk about destiny, let me just clarify that uh, if you are enjoying sexual sin, if you're indulging in pornography, masturbation, um, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, if if you derive satisfaction, if you enjoy these sins, then the Bible says in Second Corinthians thirteen five that your biggest concern is not even whether you are living a sexually pure life or not. Your biggest concern is your eternity. But I want to talk to believers, those who um, understand the gospel, those who understand what Christ did for them. I want you to understand that sexual purity is a destiny issue, and I think two characters in the Bible make this very very clear. Um, the first is Joseph. So Joseph goes through a very tumultuous time. Joseph is hated by his brothers. And Joseph has got a vision concerning his destiny. God allows him to have certain dreams concerning his destiny. And he he knows that he's going to be a leader one day. He's going to be supreme. He's going to be powerful. Uh, God makes this abundantly clear. And what happens with Joseph is that it seems as if life is going the total opposite of his dreams. He's hated by his brothers. He's almost killed, he's thrown into prison, he, he sold it to the Ishmaelites, and then he finds his job as a servant in Egypt. I can imagine he has to learn a foreign language, he has to work his way from the bottom up. And the Bible says in Genesis 39 that the Lord was with Joseph. I think it says that about four times, if you read Genesis 39, four times the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph. And because the Lord was with Joseph, Joseph had favor. But in the midst of having that favor, um, Joseph had a very uh, carnal opportunity to sleep with another man's wife. And Potiphar's wife, he was working for a man called Potiphar, his wife lasted after him. And the wife said, come to bed, sleep with me. So Joseph refuses. Joseph says, no. <laughs> Joseph says, uh, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against my God? And he also says, hey, I've got work to do. Isn't it interesting that Joseph references his work when he's called to, when he's challenged concerning sexual sin. He says, I've got work to do. He's, he may not know it by then, but Joseph is talking about his destiny. Everything Joseph is doing is building towards his destiny. Joseph may not have known it then, but for you who have the scriptures, we read it and we know that every point of Joseph's life, every checkpoint, every work he's doing is building towards his destiny. So he says, I've got work to do. Besides, how can I do this thing and sin against God? So Joseph shows himself to be a true worship of God. He he counts the cost against God. He doesn't count the cost against pregnancy, diseases. He doesn't count the cost against STIs, against uh, being a father too soon. I mean, those consequences of sin are scary. But he says the most devastating thing is not even to get an unwanted pregnancy. The most devastating thing is to sin against my God. 
God? How can I do this against a holy God who loves me? That's the same motivation for us as Christians. We live a pure life out of motivation for God. But I want you to notice what he says. No one has been given authority in this house except me. He references his work. And Joseph refuses the offer. What does Mrs. Potiphar do? She, she pretends she's been raped by Joseph. She cries and Joseph is framed for rape. And Joseph is thrown into prison. Now, Joseph being thrown into prison was necessary because it was in prison that he met a destiny helper who was the cupbearer who later, two years later, informed the king about Joseph and the king, Pharaoh, was able to grant favor to Joseph and Joseph rose up the ranks from, from prisoner to prime minister. So you realize that it was necessary that Joseph went through the prison in order to get to the palace. You realize that destiny was calling. But Joseph would have avoided the, he would have avoided the prison if he went down with Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife, Joseph may not have known it then, but Potiphar's wife was a destiny killer. If Joseph had agreed to have a clandestine affair with Mrs. Potiphar, hey, you know what? Maybe he could have gotten some sort of job security. Maybe he would have been the servant who would never be fired. But you know what? He would have forever been a servant. He would never be prime minister. Sexual sin is about destiny. And I believe there are places that God wants to take us, but we don't know. Like Joseph, we don't know. And if we give it to sexual sin, we'll never know. If Joseph had slept with Potiphar's wife, God would have raised another. God would have raised another. God would have had his work of saving the world done. Another prime minister would have risen in place. You see, God always has, we, we are not indispensable to God. But sexual sin makes us lose out on God's plan. And I don't know how many things you and I have missed because of sexual sin. I don't know how many potential marriages have been missed. I don't know how many ministries have been missed. I don't know how many, uh, uh, I don't know how many work, you know, transformative work has been missed because we took sexual sin casually. And you know, there's something our culture says, ah, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. Guys, it is that serious. Sexual sin is so serious. Sin, forget about sexual sin. Sin, sin in itself is so serious. It caused the death of the Son of God. Just think about that for a minute. That our sin caused the death of the Son of God. Sin is serious. Now, I think another character that emphasizes how sexual sin is a destiny killer is Reuben. The Bible says in Genesis 35, 22, that when Reuben, when Israel was living in that land, his eldest son Reuben went in and slept with one of his wives, one of his concubines who was Bilha. And the Bible says Reuben went in, slept with Bilha, and the Bible says that um, his father, Jacob, heard about it. And that story just kind of fizzles out. Now, Reuben is Joseph's brother. Reuben has a sexual encounter. He sleeps with his father's wife, and he, you know, pretty much gets away with it. And life goes on. And I think between the time Reuben slept with his father's wife, up to the point where his father was dying was about a period of about 14 years or so. And 14 years later, Jacob is about to die and is about to pass on the blessing to his sons. He's about to bless his sons. And there's a specific blessing that is reserved for the firstborn. It's a very special blessing and it's, it's in two parts. So in that culture, the eldest son gets a, a lion's share of the wealth when the father dies. So Reuben, being the firstborn, um, gets the lion's share. He perhaps will get 50% of the wealth, 50% of the slaves, 50% of the property, 50% of the connections. Uh, he's the lucky guy, simply by being born first. And he also would get the spiritual blessing that came from God to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and now to him. And in Genesis 49, when Jacob is dying, he's about to die, what does God do? What, what does Jacob do? Jacob calls his sons and says, come, let me bless you that I may tell you what will come, what will happen to you in days to come. And he calls Reuben. He says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first, the, the first sign of my strength. And you can imagine how Reuben is feeling, really excited that he's going to get all these wonderful blessings. But then Jacob changes tact and says, Reuben, you will no longer excel. Because 14 years ago, you went and slept with my wife, my concubine. And Reuben is shocked. And you would think that Jacob would say, but I'll still bless you. No, he says, you know, you're done. Next, 
he calls his next son Simeon and Levi. Reuben is cast. Reuben loses out on destiny. And who did Reuben's blessing go to? If you read First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, we are told that Reuben was not even counted in the genealogical history of Israel because he slept with his father's concubine. And we're told the blessing of Reuben went to Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, the one who chose purity, the one who chose to honor his destiny. Joseph got the blessing and it went to Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. The destiny of Reuben was robbed by sexual sin and the destiny of Joseph was enriched by sexual purity. And part of the blessing of Reuben went also to his eldest brother, Judah. He was not the eldest, but he was among the strongest. And that's why Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It could have been the Lion of the tribe of Reuben. But sexual sin is a destiny killer. And don't let anyone ever tell you it's never that serious. It is that serious. Honor God with your body. Honor God with your wealth. And um, if you're watching this um, in real time, we're going to have an event on Sunday, the 14th of May, 2023. It's called Boy Miss Girl. Uh, it's going to be at Sitam Valley Road if you're in Kenya. Sitam Valley Road, Nairobi at the Dennis White Hall. I'm going to be talking about practical, passionate purity because we need to recover the destiny that has been lost, the years of the locusts of Eden, what the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy, and we need to recover the heart of purity, biblical purity as God desires it, so that God may redeem us and that our lives may be more like Joseph and less like Reuben. God bless.